just uh, okay. We're going to start with delegations. Uh, Hillier Road East Development. Brent, you have the uh, the podium. Uh, you know me, Council Mayor. I'm on the east end of the little area. This has been an ongoing problem for 18 years. Um, we started off with the lawyer being involved in the AR. I've gone through many, many council meetings where to get it so that we had the uh, right of way put in so that my house could actually have the services of everybody else sewer, water, and road, roadway because my access to the train. And I was just joking with my friend that we had to leave early because I would have ridden a train was going to come and stop and make it so I couldn't get here. And that's what happens quite often, especially now with households being bigger and trains being longer. Um, my, my access was put in 1972. So that was first was the fear that there was a train accident. I could never get out of there. Recently, the developer has put in a fence, but he put in many fences. None of them have any um, blacking or privacy shielding. So when you come to my house and look at it, it looks like I live next door to a prison right now. Because there's nothing but lights and no shielded fencing, just open fence with hard wire on it. He recently put one across, I think it's 1721, he across, right across the road. But when the train didn't derail, like we had to do, there's no possible way I'm getting out of my house. I can't. Like, it would be right in my driveway, I would, it would be stuck. Also, I can't develop. I went through processes of doing um, like development plans to show that I could put some building lots in. Um, I got a $8,000 repairing assessment done on the property to prove that it was okay to be developed. Uh, I spent a bunch of money 15 years ago, and now this has been 15 years of sitting and waiting, which I understood at the time that when he first got it subdivided into lots for me, a 30-acre parcel, he got it down and put in lots. And my understanding of the land titles after that time was that he had to put in the roads and services to the properties, but it never happened. He did little pieces here, little pieces there. He did very minimal road extensions. He never did anything that really subdivided those parcels up. And obviously never gave me any easement or, or right away. Now I know when, I was first speaking Greg Kylo quite a few years ago, when they did the industrial park over where the manufacturing plant is now, they did the industrial park, they actually had to give up right away to two properties on the train tracks. So that those people had proper sewer water and access. Now it was, I don't know what if it was born at their expense, but he had to give up the land for it to do it. Um, now with this fence going in, it's brought up to my attention. I tried to be get on at the meeting, uh, I think it was February last year, <laughs> or a few years ago with COVID, and he first put this application in to build this two five five story boat storage places. I tried to get on that meeting, but my internet is so slow because I don't have good internet. I can't get it across the train tracks. I couldn't get on at the meeting. So I kind of threw my hands in the air and went, I guess it's not. I can't do anything about it. But this is my sort of last ditch effort to find out if I'm going to have a reasonable access and proper services. I don't have, like I said, the train stops or anything happens. I don't really have proper fire protection because the fire hydrants are on the other side of the train tracks. So I can't, my house was burned because I can't get fire protection. And I think as a citizen of Sick Moves, I should at least have that. And it ends up, I don't have the rights or I don't have the opportunity to develop my property and have four acres on the river that granted it takes some fill, but it could definitely be developed into housing, which is something we desperately need. So my question to the council is, I don't know how the developer told me, but if you joined two properties without subdividing, or doing any type of subdivision application. And he took out the right of way that, from what my understanding was five years ago, the right of way was there. It was down there. So I'm wondering if there's anything that can be done about it or if I'm just where I am and I'm staying there type thing. So I don't know if you guys have any answers or 
can you tell me anything more? Councilor Evans. Thank you. Um, Brent, I read your letter and I'm just wondering to help me clarify. It's okay for Kelly to go back to the map that was on there. Yeah. Um, if, if you wouldn't mind getting this pointer and just pointing out and explaining um, what you would like to happen. Okay, um, actually, I think on the last page, I noticed when I was looking at what you guys said on there, on, it. on the very last page, there is the way, right there is the way it used, that was my understanding of what was going in. And the property that he joined is with the little squiggle red line right there, yeah. To the right there. That actually is those two properties, which is actually one property was all designed to be voice and voice storage. Um, he joined that property and 1721 across the road into one property with no there was no anything to do with council or the city to have that done, or else I've heard about it. And I haven't heard anything about it. <laughs> so in by doing that with his new proposal, he's taken that road out with the cul sac and the right of way that comes to my house. Thank you. Councillor Bushel. Yeah, through the chair. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Brett, for that. Sorry, um, can you use your mic? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, thanks. Thanks very much for coming and making um, um, I think, does uh, Scott, do you have anything? Isn't that ball still going in that, in that area, you know? I won't use the mic last time. Just yell. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, um, there is a road being constructed, and it doesn't quite go as far as that road. Um, it like the bulb actually terminates probably at that that property line just to the the west right there um and the idea is that it would be dedicated road when it's finished construction so it, it wouldn't go as far as that bulb goes now on that drawing okay but how would you join those two properties together would be my question scott you need one big property like he's taking out you <laughs> taking out where that road goes to the bulb He's taken that all out and joined two separate properties, joined 1721 and 1713 together to make one bigger piece of property for his two five story storages. So I still show it as two separate properties. So 713, so kind of south of that, of the bulb, south, south of the road, and then north of the road. As I saw it as being two separate properties. Hmm. I think Gord has. Go ahead, Gord. Yeah, no, thanks, Scott. Yeah, I just, I was, because I, yeah, I, I thought they were two separate properties. I didn't know they were, you were, you were saying they're one. So I think, um, you know, I think maybe we got some home to, homework to do. I know this has been a long drawn out uh, development and things have changed over the years, lots. And it's even, you know, it's even tough for council to keep up. And I've been, we, most of us have been here for two terms and we're, it's, things have changed in, in the last two terms. So. I think we'll do, you know, I think we have some homework to do, but yeah. Thanks for bringing that to our attention. Councillor Bailey. I was just wondering if um, do a little more research and then we throw it to planning and development to maybe have both groups come in and we'll ask the current landowner there and try to see if we can come up with a solution. Is that something I'm looking to you, Gord? To <laughs> can we leave that with you two and, and Scott? That's a great idea. Can we just uh, maybe it'll just be a smaller group and we'll be able to get through some of these things a little bit more. That's just my suggestion. But sure, that sounds good. Um, will you guys be in touch with Brett and let him know when? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'd like to find out because, like I said, I've been sitting here for eighteen years. I'd like to spend a lot of money on everything. And have no place to go now. I mean, the old uh, the old council years ago has said, well, you got to do this development plan and you got to do this repairing thing. And then we can talk to the developer and we can go from there. And I said, my understanding was that it's all common. And then I saw this and he put a big fence in and now I have a fence everywhere. And I don't have any possibility of development. So in the ALR, 
the city agreed that they would that all had to come through his property to get services to get my land out of the ALR. And part of it with the ALR when we went through that was that they said that, well, okay, this is all for housing. That's why we'll release this property. Otherwise, they're not going to release my property. So if, if, if I can't develop it, I feel kind of shafted in the way that I went through all this and went followed all the rules and went through everything. And here I am standing here 18 years later with my half hand and I can't get anything out of it, right? So I'm assuming there must be a paper trail somewhere for this, maybe. Go ahead. I've, I've, I've tried to, to work on the, the paper trail and I got to March 2013. So I still have 10 years to go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's true. It looks like both those property, properties were removed from the ALR for the provision of housing. Um, the, the property at... Uh, you know, on um, Hillier Road was rezoned from housing to um, industrial. industrial. Um, and then, yeah, and I, you know, there's drawings that show services and looks in some of the reports I've seen, it shows services going in and, and access um, to the property. And, you know, you'd never get a subdivision with only access to cross train tracks. Like it just would never happen. No, I can't get services. No. Like I said, I can't get I can't get city water, I can't get city sewer, I can't get anything across the tracks. I can't get telephone. Yeah, so really? I just have a just a question for you. Uh, so your access is off of there, right? Can be yeah, yeah, and that's it. That's it. So like I said, if, if a train were to derail anywhere in there, I do not have any other way out of my property. I'm stranded. And in the summertime, when, when the bridge is opening because of the big houseboats and the rain is really long, they always block my driveway. I've sat there. I've missed so many things from doctor's appointments and stuff, just sitting there waiting for a train. They legally don't have to move because I'm not a public crossing. So I just sit there. And 30 years ago, when I bought the place, that was a big problem. Houseboats were small, never open. And the pole yard, when they were my neighbors, they were so nice. They had, we had a dirt road going through there. I could drive through anytime I wanted. And they, had, they actually gave me a key to the gate. And uh, now the new developer, he's just not friendly to me at all. He's done a lot of stuff. Like, like I said, like if you come to my house and have a look, drive down my driveway and have a look, and you'll think that you're driving into a penitentiary because there's just nothing but chain link fence and barbed wire two feet away from my from my driveway. Which there was another thing there. My understanding was that if you can't put a fence like that. It has to be twenty feet away, and it's two feet away. And am I to understand this is outside of the ALR though? Correct. And what do we have it zoned as? Um, right now, I think it's agriculture bay. Agriculture, even though it's not in the ALR. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, Brent. Just leave it with uh, Scott and the planning department, and uh, they'll give you a shout and okay. pick up some information for you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Brent. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Brent. Thank you. Okay, moving along, Eagle Valley Snowmobile Club. Natalie, take it away. Oh, is everybody? Go Sick and Moose Go. Let's sled town. Yeah. So I wanted to come today to provide an update, um, kind of to help the club where we're at, where we need to go, and sort of see maybe where the industry is stepping in, to be honest. Um, <laughs> it's been a long week. And I don't know, some of you may have seen some of the posts going up, but uh, we have a lot of issues, and one of the main issues um, is our infrastructure. So, right now, uh, we're late for at capacity about 34% of the time. And the unfortunate thing about it is, we do get a lot of people coming with huge trailers, and these trailers have nowhere to go. Not only do they not have anywhere to go at the hill, they actually don't have a lot of places to park it. So, I know from the Tourism Advisory Committee, we talked about this a little bit, but the reality is a lot of them will get here, they'll get to their Airbnbs and they realize they So they have to find, and they reach out to the club and we do figure out some things, some of the local storage places. To keep it. But that's one of the issues that we see is one of the things. Um, and I'll just go back a little bit. So this bar, we've had a decrease in day pass users. So that's just people coming to use the trail, not our club members, of 20%. Um, we have probably on the weekends about 500 riders every weekend. And I thought last two years it slowed down quite a bit to come March. 
an oscillator. Like it's, it's been incredible. And so uh, some of that may be attributed to the reports and people coming up to me, which we haven't seen since the but uh, they're here and it's it's important to continue to grow and we need because we struggle with it. Such a, we can't do anything about their experience on the hill. It's either good snow or it's not. And it is epic this year, but last two years has not been epic, you know. And so when, when they come here and they have a certain expectation for an experience and they can't get into the parking lot, such as at Queen's or there's no room such as at Blue, or we have Eagle Pass, which is one of our basic hills historically, and we are constantly kind of sitting and waiting for an OTI spots because they own the power. And so if they want to start pulling gravel out, that's done. <laughs> and that's a huge hit for the club. So um, I think the big one, we are working at Blue Lake, uh, or yet um, myself and Marlena and uh, BC Parks and Red Hike and Trail go to Blue Lake. We would like to get another access there. Uh, we're going to have these events. Um, for the board, um, for the club, we decided that it was better to seek an access and have two parking lots instead of one big parking lot. Problem is, is we only day or we only groom at next time. Um, we don't want to get to a situation where we're day grooming or trails are a lot narrower than Revelstoke, for example. And so it's, it's a hazard. Uh, we tried last year a little bit at Eagle Pass just to meet some concerns that our riders were having and our operators that were using work because they found it safe just with the speed of snow and the hazard, you know, they don't want somebody to be obviously. So, so that said, we feel that it was put it up, split up the traffic so that we're actually still producing a good product that's, you know, able to withstand about 100 to 120 riders, but that's our better option. So that said, that's more within the CSRB. We are looking for something from the district as we move forward on that application, but um, for us, in particular, in the district, is so what we need is we need about two and a half kilometer parking lots of that outlet. So I know it's been discussed um, multiple times. Uh, Daryl and I really quickly touched on it because I was curious a while back um, whether within the section 57 for the mountain bike park we were establishing a parking lot up there. And I didn't get too much into it, but I understand that we didn't do that. And I would like to propose that uh, the club works for the district decisions to do this and establish that. I think no matter what we needed, I wanted um, historically it's always a group of people to be more involved. quite dangerous actually the birds to fall and destroy. And um, so we need to be able to use that parking lot. But right now it's really just an open space and it needs to be established and needs to be leveled out and, and let to settle and some ground put up there so that it can be used properly and we can actually get vehicles up there. So um, that would be probably my number one ask to the council is to see whether we could work together on that. I know that we have um it's the community or help me out here in this loss. The community um, on and I lost the name of this for you. The co op. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. And then we are really, really good at doing that. So, we do um, Some things that the club's been working on. We have uh, recently got grants funding through the PCS to. Um, Purchase a new snow cat, which would probably be used um, either to replace one of our other cats, like older cats going forward, or if we do um, get to groom a second trail that bloomed, then we have a cat to do that instead of moving them. Uh, we also have acquired a standing plow truck. Um, this has been a huge issue. We just are always sort of at the mercy of contractors. And, the district has been awesome about their outlet for us, but it's totally not a priority. We get it. <laughs> like, we get that it's not a priority route, but once they're in there, like Daryl, you know, you can't, once they start parking at 7 or 7.30, you're kind of done until the next day. And it's 
it gets pretty rough because these trailers that are getting drug in here are heavy and um, they just can't get through. <laughs> so so it, it's challenging. And I think that comes to the experience when people come and we're just not able to receive them really properly and, and professionally. Um, so those are the big things that you know we're challenged with now. And growth, you know, I think uh, right now internally we are um, kind of working a little bit on restructuring within the club. Um, everybody may not know, but we have 17 employees currently, and uh, we are looking that we will need more. Volunteerism is good to some respects, but then there is always um, that moment where there's less people. So if somebody happens to not make it or not get a task completed, then you know there's no there's no real accountability there. They all are volunteering their time, so you know we have to realize that that expectation. Is Um, but really, we're in a constant battle between, between protecting the values and identity of the club and bolstering our business practices. Um, and that's just in recognition of what the club has actually become, um, which is an economic driver of the sector. That's what we've done. You know, we're not, we're not a club. And we're super accountable to the people who have invested here, who live here, who work here, uh, to the restaurants, <laughs> you know, the hotel is. People aren't going to stop and say we use the kitchen to start again. Sure. It's just not, you know, unless the highway's closed, people probably stop and say, uh, you know, we, it's necessary to protect this um, for what it is. And I'm really open to try to figure out how we can work with that as a community because I think we're sort of at that um, critical mass as a club. You know, it's always concerning to me being inside of it. And wondering, do we take it to the, to the next step, really, or do we sit back and just let it stay a club and sort of have its little bumps along and, you know, not take it for what it is and the value that it has in the community? So, um, some other things that have definitely come to my attention, especially over the last year, it was sort of a little bit like opening Pandora's box when I realized just organizationally um, how much structure was needed. Um, because we've always been part of the event, I think there's been some challenges. And I don't know whether this is something that really sits with, but when it comes to OHS, uh, we're getting on board now. But little things like on Saturday, none of our employees have first aid training. And I don't know if this is something that the district of Sigmund's does as, as you know, municipality that they send anybody, but that we can take on any of it. A lesser rate, or you know, as more like operation. That would be something. Those little things where we're struggling, but we really, need, we really need, um, that we could get some support that way as well. So it's tough. It's tough to come and ask for supports that you're not even really sure that's what they can do for the club. But it's definitely an enterprise. For the community, and I think the community is asking us to keep growing. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's hard to say we can't. Like marketing brand is always because we don't make work for it. You know, and they're coming from Saskatchewan, you know, they're on it with a 40 foot trailer with eight sleds in it. And we're like, sorry, we don't, we don't have room for you. I know it's 9 a.m. and, you know, we just got everybody dressed, but. That's for Thanks, Natalie. Um, yeah, that is, um, you know, it, it, it is, but snowmobiling is our, is our winter tourism business. It keeps our, it keeps our town alive. So I, I, I feel that we have to look at your asks and as a council, see if there's any way that we can support this because Snowmobile supports sick moose. So um, I do uh, I, I do believe we have to support this council. Board, do you have any comments? <laughs> Don't work with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I uh Natalie, I feel for you. It's uh it's a tough one. It's a, a snowmobile club is uh, you know, where a bunch of people got together, families and started a club, and it's just kind of uh, morphed into a, an organization and uh 
but things have changed. Things have even changed really quickly since I've left. I haven't been there for two years now, and or maybe more. And uh, the club's uh, the club is not the focus anymore. Uh, there's a new generation. Um, just we got an email today from the BC Snowmobile Federation, and they've already lost a thousand members, club members in the in the federation throughout the province. And people just, you know, I don't know if it's uh, you know they can travel again and they can go back south or what's going on, but the people just pay the $25 and as soon as just pay that and go where the club member, the membership thing is where you get your volunteers and you get your people up and help with firewood. And, you know, you don't get all those $25 a day people going up there to do firewood. They go up there and burn the firewood, but you're, it's just become an organization that's really uh, expanded over the years and it's uh, and it needs some attention. And, you know, it doesn't have the funds to go out and purchase property. And so we, you know, we, we, uh, you know, we, we have a approval letter for where we operate out of, out of the, of the gravel pit at, at uh, Kerr Road there, or Stepit Road. And, you know, we have an agreement with uh, Highways for Eagle Pass. We got it uh, right now. We have an agreement with Northways for Queese because they're logging the front side of Queese. So we're using the back side. So we had to, Natalie had to go out and get approval to do use the backside, and then all heads uh, are as, as a monster in its own. But uh, yeah, our parking lot's maxed out, and uh, you know we've tried, you know, to work with, um, you know, to work with the different farmers around there. But you know, snowmobiles and you know animals don't mix, so that's a problem. And we have applied for grant funding. We did uh, apply to get a parking lot at Two K. You know, I don't know eight or 10, eight years ago. And um, we didn't get the grant funding, but we were to widen the road because, you know, logging roads are only wide enough for one vehicle. And it's really hard to operate two kilometers with trucks and trailers and non-experienced, you know, sure they can drive on the highway with a truck and trailer, but they can't really drive on a logging road with a trailer. So we just, some operational stuff, Natalie's been, who have been really struggling with in the club. And uh, yeah, it needs some help. It's uh, it's really expanded and it's, you know, it's it's hard to keep on top of, but it also fills the restaurants and and you know people are buying groceries and you know they're staying in the hotels and it's a, it's a it's a good industry for Sycamus. It's a good problem to have, but it's it's a it's a tough one to crack because it it needs some money. It needs some money, and it's you know it's tough to tough to do that. So I know where she's coming from. Thanks, Lord Councilor Bailey, and then Councilor. Yeah, I, obviously, I have direct experience with the amount of business and how much this the snowmobile club and sledders really truly support uh not only my businesses so i put on my businessman hat here it's it's noticeable and it's noticeable over the last two or three years um and it employs just directly lots of people without that our layoffs businesses would be a lot more severe and I've noticed that it's it's allowing us to, you know, it's winter is still a stretch, but it's not catastrophic anymore, right? And and I think that's when we talk about the tourism piece, this is one of the things we talk about the second was how do we actually not make it just all about summer? And then we get to these super lows where we have businesses that struggle, whether it's the motels or the restaurants, everything else. And you can see over the last two or three years how much you've grown, but how much that actually has supported so many businesses here. And, and you know, you're quite right, Madam Mayor, that, uh, you know, it is, it is the big chunk of winter business. So, I mean, I'm obviously 100% supportive. And, and, and I, I think you, the growing pains are pretty obvious. I mean, it's a nice problem to have, as, as, as Gorda said. And it shows that there's a lot of people that do want to come to this community and experience what we have to offer in the great outdoors and sledding. And I think it's such an important piece of our tourism-based economy. I mean, we put a lot of effort into summer and maybe it's just time that we start figuring out how we put more effort into winter uh, because this is a key piece. Thanks for coming. Go ahead, Councillor Peach. Um, is it, it is mostly about parking to accommodate these people yeah it, the big the big rigs and challenges yeah that's what we need so but yeah as far as the parking has go I mean it is nice to get into agreements with private landowners I think that's always an option but it's also one that it's not 
right? So I need to know that you yeah. And it needs to be down, it not up on the mountain. You don't want them on the roads and like on going up in if, their rakes. If, if it's closed, like, so we typically, when it's closed to industry or when industry is not active, but when when it is active, such as on 1800 roads, which is why we live. Oh, okay. They're actually logging. Up they're logging that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the last two years they've been covering around a six kilometer mark, and there is a small parking area there um, that we use and drive to if they have radio. Um, but I mean, there's really trucks, and we don't see a lot of traffic there, unfortunately, yeah. as it is. Um, but that's that's probably our number one. Yeah. As far as if we want to talk about you know the tourist experience. So, yeah. You know, turning away from that nine and is yeah. a really crappy feeling. And it's not easy on our, our attendants and our parking staff to, to do that, have to manage those um, the emotions that come off of mm -hmm. you know, yeah, after that really long drive. So, and, and you know, as far as snowmobilers and their patterns with the sickness. For sure, we do get a lot of individuals who ride blue and who ride Eagle Pass that are currently still staying in Noble Stoke. There's a lot we can do, but that's as a community, and really that's the private sector that gets creative and the private sector that opens up businesses that you know you identify these niches um, that you can start to attract them and go from there. As far as our, our hotels and, and motels go, they're pretty balanced, and like I said, they don't all have the parking. Mm -hmm. um, Days are gone where they come in, in trucks. You know, I just have a sleep in the truck. It's they're all drowning together and they're all holding these massive trailers, and mm -hmm. it gets harder, right, to park yeah. everybody. So yeah. that's in town, and obviously, I'm, you know, um, and I don't need to I get to a point, but that, that'll be up to screen from places to see what we can do about that yeah. and encourage people to stay and just leave their trailer and secure storage. So. So are the roads, sorry, Go ahead. Um, and the parking on the way up, that would be Crown? That would be Crown Land? Mm -hmm. Not But it is east of the district for 30 Oh, okay. But some of it is MOTI and are we uh, different yes, pieces? Pass is MOTI. One of the other locations that we're looking at for blue may be MOTI, BC Parks, or private. Uh, there's some options there depending on whether we're allowed to get a permit for that um, to, to operate there. And then uh, Blue Lake is actually a provincial park where we have a, the corral right in the roadways for the uh, On Saturday, for example, we had the emergency incident. It was it was complete chaos. It's it's too narrow. You have trucks coming in. Um, they can't back or put their boys up very well. Um, down a <laughs> narrow alley of sleds and trucks. And, uh, you know, I think when we met uh, BC Parks and Rec sites and trails, they were surprised. And we met on a Friday morning by design because I wanted them to really understand uh, what it looks like. And I think they were <laughs> by the chaos that kind of comes these guys as they go up the hill. And, and by 11 o'clock, you don't use your You know, it's like, oh, come on. But in the meantime, it's really beyond you cannot get. Emergency view. Rich. Through the chair. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie, for being here and everything. We know each other on this level, and I, I learned a lot about snowmobiles not very long ago. Um, so I do appreciate and have a different um, understanding of what you're doing now. Um, have the, has the club looked outside the box of? You know, uh, I mean, I know boat trailer parking is an issue in Sigluse, but we do have some space which may be changing or not changing in the future. Um, and that someone either takes it on privately, like if Sikamus says, hey, you can use, we use this for boat trailers. And that people do, you know, like a drive through, like you do at school, you drop your sleds and your guy, they go down, they park their trailers, someone shuttles them up and that's a private business. That guy's now making money for 10 bucks to get you back. That we know where all the trailers are, and then 
you know, and, and it's a window. So I understand everybody's going to rush up to the parking lot and try to get those prime spots. But then the guy at nine o'clock now has that option. And is that something Sycamus can do? And I don't know if we have a spot or where we help the club out that way, where we put our boat trailers um, that then we can kind of look at something like that. So we're accommodating. It, it, it's different and it's not going to be easy for people not to be able to get right there, but it gets them there. I think off the top of my head, my first spotting board might be able to challenge this or, or agree, but I don't think many of them are going to let just any valet driver get in their trucks and trailers and pull them away. I mean, these guys are pretty particular about, about their vehicles and their units. So I don't know if it's so much that you can get to a point where you can be dropping them off as a valet service. They could park. Sorry. I was thinking more that they go, they take their truck yeah. down and then we taxi them back up. Yeah. yeah, that we're not touching anybody's property now. Yeah. Insurance would be nuts. You could, you could try it. I don't know if board might know the uh, nuances of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could, you could, we could try it. And, um, but they, their, their trailers are full of equipment and they, oh. they need access to them. So they'd have to drive all the way back down there right away. Oh, so the they, got, they, they got the heaters, trailers? they got heaters in them. Okay. They got, Didn't they go work on their sleds half the night. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so they, they're always in their trailers all the time. Okay. So they're, they're, they're using them all the time. And, and it, it would be nice. I mean, you got to remember, we are totally surrounded by ALR land. So there's lots of flat land at the bottom of the hill. That's not even being used for ALR. But it's ALR land, and you and they can't commercialize or monitor, uh, take you know, turn it into a parking lot, you know, uh, on 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 McLean McPherson Road, and then the thirty acres we have, we just have a little piece at the bottom, and the rest is all really sloped. So it's huge money to take and flatten that out and make a the parking lot up there because it's you know the first two kilometers are is I mean the road's fairly smooth, but it's actually like this up the middle. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty tough. And like establishing mm -hmm. the roadway, um, you know, the, the reality is because obviously we wouldn't really be out there if their industry is up there, but really it's everybody kind of goes up and then everybody comes down, you know, so it's not like by two o'clock, most people are there. The, yeah, you're not going to get a lot of vehicles passing, but everybody's up and then. You know, after two, everybody comes down. Is, is typically no, but there are some things that I think we can that way. Um, even whether it's solar lights, the timed ones that you just yeah, you know, like rain. So um, you know, there's there's technology available, but I think without that established parking, it's pretty hard to go up there. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I I'm, I'm, don't think we can solve this tonight, <laughs> but I do think that we should look at every option and the DOS should back and support every option that makes sense for the club. I mean, this is, this is a big part of our tourism. It's a big part of our business. It, it keeps our, our, our town in business for the winter. So yes, we're here to support you. And I think we need to look at all those pieces, maybe put them together, find out who's who around or where there's potential, and then let's start going through it and see what we can do. Um, first aid training, you could probably uh, team up with a business in town because the more folks that they get in those training sessions, it brings it down per, per head. Right. So um, there's probably a business in town, you know, houseboat companies train every every spring. Right. So just check and make a couple phone calls and you can probably get on board with them. That's just difficult because our staff, we don't necessarily always know who they are. So it's going to be so one at a time. It'll be it'll be opposite of the other major organizations. It was going to be that. But if you can do maybe five key five key people. You don't need to, you know, do all of them, but you know, you've got a level one or two that are out there all the time. I, I just wonder, like we run rec programs, and like I, I wonder if this is something we could do and say, I, I don't know, when do you want it, when do you want these people trained, like October, November, sort of thing. Like I wonder if we could align stuff like that where it kind of makes sense, and then you know, I maybe just the other point on the ELR land. I mean, this is. God, we talk so much about the ALR land. I, I, 
I wonder, I, I wonder if there's an opportunity because ALR land is not usable when it's covered in snow, whether we could at least get to a point where we can say, can we use some of this? It's not damaging the agricultural use because obviously you're going to do that in spring and summer, but could we use some of this for parking, just parking in the winter? Yeah. And I, I, I don't know, like, I mean, you guys are the experts on this, uh, whether that would even be fly, but trying to think of things like that. That's yeah. But that's a good idea. Like I said, get all the, the, the property around where you want to be. And then let's, if, if it's ALR, let's, let's chase it and see what we can do for, you know, for you. And I think um, Ian, you hit a really good point with rec. Like Jamie does food safe. She does all sorts of things. Perhaps this is one thing that she can add to great idea. She can add to her, um training programs because it's probably not only needed by you it's probably needed by others you do it oh, do we yes okay. we offer it well then let's do it yeah. okay that's perfect then avalanche savvy the avalanche part of it yeah yeah so that's kind of done by yeah the owner of the regional that's wrong okay that we do not give us training as well um, so that's something that would be separate. Probably, these are just all things that, yeah. you know, they cost, they cost money. You know, we did chainsaw courses this year because they should never do chainsaws at our work, for example. Uh, we get everybody just wants a chainsaw, go for it. Um, but, you know, that was $5,000 to train a couple of guys. You know, they may or may not be in the future. So yeah. it's, uh, it's a big investment, but it's necessary. Scott, I think Rec Sites and Trails offers free chainsaw courses. They do in, in May. Yeah, yeah. they've got trail lights. Like, yeah. Did you have your hand up? Councilor McCabe. Thank you. Excuse me. Well, I wonder what the liability is to send up uh, district equipment up uh, to the parking lot in the summer and uh, use the dump trucks and backhoes and excavators or whatever we have as well off you know, the parking lot. Mm -hmm. First thing you need is to find that funny part. <laughs> Daryl. Please <laughs> 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 of course. That actually that cleanup you know, is actually slated to be reharvested. So our first step is to establish it. Otherwise, it's reharvested. And I, I could be wrong in that, but that's my understanding from these details. So we do have an opportunity right now that it is cleared and that it will soon not be cleared and it will be considered reharvested. And that's the opportunity. So we need to chase that right now. So why don't we do this? Put together the space that you need and We'll see what we can give you the support that, you know. Yeah. Um, and just also understanding that this, if the mountain bike park doesn't have this, you know where to send people to do the circuit. You know, like this, if you're yeah, doing no, competitions, there's, yeah. you know, even here, yeah. or they're going to have to walk up the, so they're going to have to start their circuit, which is, yeah. again, not the experience that I think someone's supposed to absolutely to that story. But what, a, you know, I, I Sad, but what a great problem to have, right? We we started out with, you know, a small sledding group, and now we're a major. How many sledders do you think you'll see this year? How many have you seen so far this year? Well, um, I just printed another 2,000 houses, and we've up to 15,000 day riders. So day riders, and that doesn't include your, your seas. Yeah. Not okay. That's huge. Yeah. yeah, you'll see over 20,000 for sure. Yeah. So that's big business for us. We need to figure out. We need to figure it out. Well, we need to figure it out anyways if we're going to put an owl, uh, an owl head Park skate bowl up there. Yeah, they're working on that. But, I mean, we need to work together and figure it out. Yeah. So. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Natalie. Leave that with us. Leave it. Okay. Bye now. I just... What's well, I guess she's there. got... Um, I want... I mean, if we ever wanted to put together like a working group or something, I'd be more happy to sit on that. And because I'm very enthusiastic about it, I, I've, I, I mean, I've been here three and a half years in my first year, and it was no COVID that first year. But what if I was in three years is 
hundred percent noticeable. Like it's all the difference in the world. Yeah. And I can see it at, you know, the hotels, at the motels, how many sled trucks are around. We see it directly in our restaurant. I think every restaurant has seen it. Like it's it's impressive, really, how how much that's grown in three years. The industry has like it really is impressive. I'm surprised. And we are seriously pushing for a motel here. Everyone we talk to, every developer, every people, it's like yeah. so and we are getting some interest and in, so fingers crossed our motel base will go up as well. So should we put together a working group, Kelly? Um, yeah, so through the chair, I was just going to suggest, I mean, a working group is fine. I was just going to suggest that I can reach out to Natalie and then maybe she can come in and we can have a meeting. Maybe I can get Daryl involved and we can just have a little brainstorming session and then go from there. That's perfect. Thank you. For a starting point and, and yeah. then we'll report back to you guys. Yeah. That sounds great. On two weeks, maybe four weeks, but maybe we'll get back to you. Get, I think get to us, get back to us with this, what each lot looks like and what what's available. Yeah. It, so good. so I, that'll help. Yeah, we'll follow up with Natalie. Perfect. Thank you guys. Okay. It's like okay. Street naming and civic addressing bylaw number one zero two six twenty twenty three adoption. Recommendation that District of Sikkim Street Naming and Civic Addressing Bylaw 1026-2023 be adopted this eighth day of March 2023. Could I get a mover? Councillor Evans, Councillor Bushell. Discussion, Malcolm? No, I'm good, thank you. Okay. This was what we talked about the other week, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, we did talk. I thought we talked about so, Go ahead, uh, Scott. <clears throat> So they, it got three readings at the last meeting. So then it comes back for adoption. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions and discussion? <laughs> Any more questions or discussion? Okay, I call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried? Um, staff reports. Kerr Road <laughs> Culvert Construction Services. Sorry, this has been on our, I think we've been discussing this forever. Recommendation the District of Sycamus, oh, uh, sorry, the recommendation that Council award the services for construction of the Owlhead Creek Crossing on Kerr Road to the Splat Scene Development Corporation at a contract price of 253337 plus GST. Can I get a mover? Board, seconder, Malcolm, discussion. Daryl, take it away. Sure, Chair. Uh, this is uh, just a key piece to get this long happening project going. Uh, we've we spent a couple of years last year getting a lot of the regulatory things uh, in place and satisfying just the many regulations we had to. Um, Lots and Development Court was here at the public finance meeting and spoke to the technical aspect of it a little bit. Some questions. Uh, we've we've kind of pressed them on their approach, looked at their work plan. Uh, it's it's solid. It meshes really well with what the engineer is requiring, and uh, it's coming in under the budgeted amount. And so, because of the sensitivity of this kind of job in in the environmental realm um, and the timing of it, we're asking that we single source this job to uh, spot. They do dozens of these crossings all over the place and we have a protocol agreement with them and uh, and they're nearby. And that approach, like I said, is uh, better than anything we came up with in terms of keeping the road open. They have access to a Bailey Bridge that they could keep that lane open and uh, diverting the creek itself was engineered to bring a separate culvert in to do that through the, the 11 days of construction. They're simply going to put some sheet piling in, make, uh, make a couple of uh, little basins, I guess, and just pump the water over. So they're saving us money and their approach is really, really smart. So, uh, for all the right reasons, I'm just uh, suggesting we look at single sourcing it, get them locked down, and they can schedule this. Thanks, Joe. Councillors, questions? 
And Councillor Bailey and Councillor McCabe. Um, so this is for the environmental monitoring aspect of the culvert. Is that correct? Through the chair, that'll be a component of it. This is for the construction of. Oh, okay. So there is a, a whole environmental component with the monitoring and all that. That's that'll be integrated into their work plan. Okay, so this is the total total budget for the culvert. This is the construction aspect. The culvert was purchased last year, and we had to take another run at it this year to get it in, just because of the windows and everything else. So, Councillor McCabe. Yeah, in our financial policy, we, we can direct source to Splats and mm -hmm. it, it's built right into our policy. So I support it. Thanks. And they have done this before. They know exactly what they're doing. They're the people for the job. Sounds great. Okay. Any other uh, discussion? Hey, I'll come to question. All in favor? Carried. Okay. Recommendation that Mayor Anderson and Councillor to be selected to attend the 2023 <laughs> Federation of Municipalities Conference and Trade Show in Toronto, Ontario, May the 25th to the 28th. Could I get a mover? Oh, thanks, Mr. Rich, Councillor Bushel. Okay, can we have... Uh, I, I do have a Councillor that's put up their hands, so, but we are open for... <laughs> Councillor, everybody's backing away. Mm -hmm. Councillor Evans uh, has um, requested to attend. I, I'd like to, um, but uh, I, I'm willing to concede if someone else wants to go ahead of me. Councillor McCabe. Excellent choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other discussion? All right, Councillor Evans, it is. Um, I'll and, give you a good report. <laughs> and um, I'm sorry, our CAO will be attending as well. So, yeah. So, uh, what call in the question? I haven't yet. <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> <laughs> Carrie. Bob to Toronto. Bob to Toronto. <laughs> Notices of motion. Pedestrian safety, Trans Canada Highway crosswalk to Solskwa Sycamus Bridge. Thank you. Can I, can I? Is it okay if I talk now? Making sure. Okay. Um, we we actually talked about this before, and we talked about it again today. Um, but I just see a lot of folks and a lot of kids walking. Um, across the crosswalk and in the winter it's especially treacherous because the snow is there and there's no way around it and i know we've talked about it before but i was just hoping to bring it up today to see if we could maybe start some kind of concrete step forward to getting a sidewalk in there to uh to at least get to the um from the light to the um the turn off of canvas Squaw bridge just to um to help folks out and um but I didn't know if it was possible, so I thought I'd just ask because I know it's probably MOTIs, but uh, I was just gonna bring it up today, see what we can do. Because we brought it up before. Councillor McCabe. Good idea, Bob. <laughs> Wish I would have thought of that. <laughs> Anyone else? Have... I've been asking for that for two years. Before the bridge was finished, I thought it'd be nice to have that path ready for the bridge, but now we can have it ready after the bridge. But uh, yeah, and it might not be a sidewalk. It might be a, a gravel shoulder. It might be a paved pathway. Who knows? But uh, some sort of pedestrian access connects the bridge to the pedestrian activated light on Highway 1. Yes, absolutely. It should be, it shouldn't be a number eight priority. It should be probably number uh, two right after the pedestrian bridge across the channel or something. I think we should move it up in our active transportation plan as a number three priority. So I'm looking to Daryl because I think Daryl might be, I, I think he's noodling around a solution in his head right now. Through the chair. I mean, I, I did see it on the list today and I guess I've got a couple of questions for uh, Urban that, that did that table because it looked to me like the highway one 
to the Soul Square Bridge was, I think it was like $67,000 piece, which to me doesn't, that would be the trickiest part. I think you're down by the river, I would, I would think. Otherwise, we're going to MOTI to see if we can get it out front. But I think, you know, it's been talked about enough over the last couple of years that I think we all realize that that's a key piece. We need to get that one done. So I think, uh, you know, maybe between Scott and I, we can see what we can get moving. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Hey, thanks, Bob. Look at that. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Mel. Good, Bob. <laughs> Okay, so uh, resolutions released from in camera for information. <clears throat> Resolution number 23 76 that Brett Joyce be appointed as, as the seventh director on the District of Sycamus Development Corporation Board of Directors for a term of one year, and that the resolution be released from in camera. Can I get a move forward? Second? No. Don't I? It's for, for <clears throat> only uh, this is the resolution that from in camera that was released. And uh, Mr. Joyce has accepted the appointment. So he's on the board. <laughs> the end. <laughs> the end. <laughs> the end. Okay, District of Sycamus Revitalization Tax Exemption Bylaw recommendation the council direct staff to review District of Sycamus. Uh, revitalization tax exemption bylaw 917-2016 and provide recommendations for amendments that consider the housing strategy and housing needs assessment. Councillor McCabe, Councillor Bushell, discussion. Could someone address this? Go ahead, Kelly. Yeah, um, most certainly through the chair. Uh, so I know uh, previous uh, last year we did talk about doing some modifications to the revitalization tax exemption to add some kind of incentive for purpose built uh, rentals or other type of affordable housing. So that in addition, that was a recommendation from the housing strategy and housing needs assessment. Staff want to move forward on that as we want to make sure we have those incentives ready to go when developers come through the door. So we're just seeking direction now and we'll come back with more information exactly on what and get some feedback in terms of exactly what those incentives will be. But this is just the first step saying, please, please allow us to do this. Okay, any other, any questions? Comments, go ahead. Yeah, comment. You know, it's it's a bit of a house clean thing, but I think we've already directed staff to implement the housing strategy for any low hanging fruit that can be done. So I think you already have direction from council previously to do that. And, you know, this is just a, a formality. There are people out there looking um, at properties in town and we would like something a little bit more uh, official as it relates to the tax exemption so we can say council has specifically said do it just to give them some comfort as well so there's a little yeah. so the last time we did this we put together a committee so that worked on this is this well there was affecting matters that's just affecting the housing this is probably for now just doing the housing we're just going to look at the housing right now okay because that's the really important piece Councillor Bailey. I'm for it. All in favor? Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Make it so. Okay, recommendation to rescind. The council rescind resolution, resolution number 23-96 from the February 22nd, 2023 regular council meeting. The council submit the following resolution to the Southern Ontario Local Government Association. Has everyone read the resolution that we submitted? Yes. Okay, so I do not need to read that. I will read the new recommendation. Okay. Second for the rescinding. First, we have to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, can I get a mover on that? Rescinding it, thanks, Mr. Bailey. Councilor McCabe, all those in favor of rescinding the resolution? Carried. Thank you. Now we're going to move to the new resolution. Recommendation that Council submit the following resolution to the Southern Interior Local Government Association. Whereas the Trans Canada Highway is BC's primary southern east west corridor and it's essential for travel, for trade and travel, and whereas 
the 400 kilometer section of highway between Kamloops and the Alberta border is home of the most challenging terrain in Canada and is used up by or is used by up to 12,000 vehicles a day. And whereas in 2021, the province committed to 837 million over the next three years to allow traffic to move more safely and efficiently, efficiently within the corridor. However, several projects identified in the provincial plan are not yet underway, including the deteriorating uh, RW Broom Bridge that poses significant public safety concerns. Therefore, be it resolved that the province initiate projects currently identified in the 2021 Highway 1 Kamloops to Alberta four-laning plan to improve the safety, reliability, and capacity of the Trans-Canada Highway. Could I get a mover? Siobhan, second. Um, any discussion on that? Go ahead, Malcolm. Just a quick one. This is, is not what we intend to do for a resolution. The original intent was to um, push four laning through the arterial section of Sycamore to have a funded detailed design, not even go to construction, just so we had drawings to show developers, here's the footprint of the new four lane. That's what we're trying to achieve here. We've lost that, but I'm not gonna change it. So so that's all this is gonna do is just push the tendering of Brune, uh, Brune Ridge really, which is not our original intent. We were trying to be the squeaky wheel and say, we want a, a funded design for uh, the four lane injured second ones. So I have, um, I thought perhaps because of the letter that we wrote to the Ministry of Transportation, and we have not heard back on that letter from them, perhaps we could do a follow-up letter, include this resolution that we're sending to Silga, but change it to, or not include this resolution, but talk about how important it is for our community to, if they're working on the Bruin Bridge, to carry out a design for the four laning so we can move forward with development in our community. So uh, that's probably a different um, recommendation. It's a, different thing. it's a whole different thing, but I mean, you're right. I mean, this isn't the... We've lost it. Yeah. Go ahead. Through the chair. Uh, so this, the original resolution was submitted to Silga. However, in speaking to the UBCM, executive committee they they would not accept something so specific in nature as it needs to apply to um, an issue that affects the region and the province in general for local government so that's why it has been amended i understand it's not the original intent um, but that is the, the reasoning for for the change me... do we have to do another oh, no, no, go ahead, ahead councillor bailey i was just wondering if we could make it more vague in terms of saying something along the lines of giving local communities um it's been submitted it's okay well there you go. yeah okay <laughs> and end of comments yeah <laughs> yeah it's done end of comments yeah, Fine. yeah. no no i'm Absolutely. i'm good through the chair i mean can we not just keep pushing can it, just, it doesn't have to be a resolution just a letter from from that's what i'm saying yeah. but i'd like to or uh, Kelly, should we make a, a recommendation to push forward with the letter to follow up our letter, or should we leave that in staff's hands to follow up on the letter? We can follow up on the letter. Let's let's do the UBCM resolution. We so, can do a follow up. And so add that portion, add our um, a funded design for our corridor and and push for having it all done at the same time. I don't know why we go this far stop what shut down our community and then in a year or two shut down our community again it doesn't even make any sense but a year or two you're optimistic <laughs> a year or two you're, yes. you're talking government it doesn't have to make sense councillor bushel in, in that letter you know also you know tell them how you know how you know how busy it is how safe we need it to be there's no crossings there's the speed limit's too high i mean we're the highest speed, speed limit's too high just all those all those safety things would make yeah. segregates our community yeah segregates our community need a turning lane into our highway commercial mm -hmm. yeah okay so we're good. we're good okay staff's got that you still have to vote on this um all those in favor carrie all right, moving on to correspondence. 
What time did I say we were going to finish tonight? 6.35. Moving on. <laughs> Correspondent. <laughs> Just messing with you. Okay, Mayor of Summerland, Earth Day. Does anyone want? The, okay, this was sent to me. Um, a challenge for our community to be involved in Earth Day. Anyone want to speak to this? She's been given a, a Earth Day. Uh, she's the, the mayor of Summerland, the honorary Earth Day municipal spokesperson. And her task is to mobilize other mayors and municipalities across the country to take part in the annual Earth Day campaign. So, so far, Summerland and Rossland are the only two interior municipalities that are part of the Earth Day network. So um, she is suggesting we go to their website, check it out, and um, consider being part of their Earth Day group. Any comments? So noted. So noted. So, um, no, I think we should we should make a decision as to whether we're going to sign up with the group to be part of the Earth Day campaign. What does it entail? Yeah. Well, you two would have to. <laughs> um, when you what it does okay. is an Earth Day logo, visuals for campaign in different formats, and clip of the campaign, posts on your social media. April 22nd. Yeah. It's a Saturday. April 22nd. And <clears throat> through the chair, you usually turn the lights out. You, you have a time where it's dark. Oh. Awesome. 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 Did you turn the lights out? The that's when you put on your. That's um. That's that's kind of missing. So we want to watch the, the energy. So how long is the video? <laughs> is it twenty minutes? Minutes. Three. Three, Three minutes. minutes.
That's good. Okay. Oh, who knew? So when is um when is our communion cleanup? Of April. The 23rd of April. 26 charging stations. A lot. Pretty pretty rough. That 23rd, right? Yes. Good luck. Nice. <laughs> No, I could be. I think we should um, put together something. Um, it's a, a good cause. It's yeah. great. Uh, I do too. That sounds like so something that I, I really like solar. The solar panel idea. I mean, and we have you know we have buildings that we can definitely look at. So, <laughs> Councilor Rich. I'm just wondering if there's a way we can involve, um, like I know about Earth Day through the schools because uh, the kids, I don't know if we do it here, but when I, when I was in um, White Rocks School District, but maybe be involved, see if the schools want to be involved in something, I don't know, t-shirt or anything or picking up stuff or, or what that looks like, but by getting, or planting, so it's hard to plant in April though, right? Um, is there some trees? Can you get them? Uh, maybe not trees. Uh, Canfor will give us a little miniature of trees for free. Um, but um, that we do involve the kids because those are going to be our next generation who's going to carry this on for us. So it's a really good idea. Really good idea. I, I agree. And I've often thought that are you giving me this? <laughs> the other hands up. I'm sorry. I didn't wait for you. Here. Go ahead, Councillor B. Thank you. Um, I've often thought about how we could involve the youth because I know that it would be important for them to feel like they were they were contributing to adapting to climate change. I know they worry about those kinds of things. Um, and planting trees wouldn't work for little kids at the edge of our 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 urban forest or, uh, barriers, but but there are uh, there are fire resistant trees. Uh, certain types of trees that don't burn and I just I always thought wouldn't it be great if we could get the youth to come up and and help plant in the in the edge of that that forest where it meets like up at Owl Head and and along the tree line um, the youth would be involved in that and I think that would be great just for tree planting I think it's a really good idea as well. If, if if we if we don't because we're running out of time this year, but definitely education in the schools and I don't know maybe some t-shirts mm -hmm. or something. A counselor Adams. Uh, yeah, and the schools already are big into Earth Day. Mm -hmm. They they concentrate all week long, probably all month long on this. So they they'd be they'd be totally yeah. game for your idea. So you know you could. Uh, I'm going to the PAC like meeting on April 17th and I'll, I'll report back what the schools are doing with the youth, if you want. Did I cover some trees? <laughs> Councillor Bushel. Yeah, uh, Nicole, uh, Nicole Alvester, she, uh, when we did her, our, our uh, community cleanup, she takes all the kids in, and I think she called it Earth Day as well. And she went up and did the whole, the whole bay out there in front of Silver Sands and mm -hmm. did Old Town Bay because she does a lot of pad paddling out there. So anyway, she has, I think she is, it might even be on her website. I was going to check it out, but she's part of the Earth Day movement. We could, uh, we could get her engaged and involved too, and maybe, you know, with communities bloom or, you know. Um, yeah, we could do that, but I think Deb has enough on her plate. Maybe we could do, we could do an Earth Day, not file it on Deb's plate. <laughs> yeah, when Nicole comes out and helps that, yeah. that, that weekend, you know, so they both work together. Yeah, and so with this, we register, so we join as a municipality for Earth Day, and then at the beginning of April, we get uh, a kit, 
it says a toolkit at the beginning of April, and it'll include all these things. But if we just get a resolution, main Earth Day, we'll we'll do that. I think Pam wants I to move that resolution. Resolution. You get the rigid registration. Rigid. Yes. <laughs> all those in favor. Now Earth Day registered. Almost. I do too. We we <laughs> things like solar panels. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Officially. Um, the next piece of uh, correspondence is ombudsperson. There's a new one. There is a link there if anyone wants to um, go to. Wait, what's the date? Oh, that's next week, Thursday, March the 16th. It's a webinar. So if anyone wants to talk on that, they can. And the uh, thank you note from the Epilepsy Society for supporting them. Okay, we have 50 minutes allotted for gallery. Any questions in the gallery? Are you sure? Thank you. <laughs> okay, we got Deb up. Okay. Hey, Deb, go ahead. <laughs> She's falling asleep. Deb? <laughs> she, accidentally she had her hand at the home meeting, didn't she? I'm muted. I apologize. Um, so, yeah, so I'm uh, I'm going to be away a fair bit this spring. So I've been having lots of discussions with Daryl about getting things organized while I am gone. Um, the community cleanup is set for April 29th. Um, and the main reason we do it then rather than Earth Day is just honestly so that people aren't in swamps in the ditches when they're cleaning up. It's just, you know, it's just a logistics and uh, it, it, it's just nasty otherwise. So it is set for April 29th and the CSRD is aware uh, as far as scheduling it for us getting our free dump day in that. Um, and, you know, like we, as, as Gord said, I have worked with Nicole with uh, some of the things she's doing, but we also get a lot of kids out for the regular cleanup and that too, because, you know, it, it, it ends up being a bit of a family event. So, um, so just wanted to let you guys know, just because I'm away, there's still lots going on. I'm having lots of discussions with people in, in terms of getting our projects underway with our partners and such. So um, lots going on, uh, just still early days. Thanks, Deb. We miss you. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I had intended to be there this week, but then some stuff came up that I had to leave. So I will be back. I, I'm going to be a, uh, there at least the those couple of weeks, uh, you know, like the week leading up to the cleanup and the week after the cleanup, because I'm um, talking to Tamara and Carly and, and Nicole about a spring garden festival, too. And I, I'm you know, try and help it's hey somebody's doing it it's not me it's very exciting mm -hmm. so i'm 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 going to help them because i'm very excited about it so hey thanks deb any other uh, comments questions from the gallery no Okay. okay well we are going to adjourn recommendation that regular council meeting march 8 2023 be adjourned, the time being 6.21. Councilor Bailey, Councilor Rich, all in favor, you're free to go. Adjourn.